Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for tuning in. Happy Passover slash Easter to um, anyone who is celebrating it. Um, thank you for tuning in for those who will be watching this um, later uh, for our uh, um, April's sustainability meeting. And I would now turn it over to our chair, for, uh, Bridget Dix. Yeah, so we're going to get started uh, with the updates on the leaf blower legislation. We were talking about uh, one of the main updates was getting rid of the exemptions, but then adding a potential exemption for people with over five acres who can apply for a permit. Uh, the list that Greg put together, it looks like Rye Ridge Shopping Center, um, the hotels, of course, we have the golf club, um, rehab and senior living center, uh, and then potentially the HOAs, uh, as well as some churches. Um, so Greg, you had said there was, it, it seems like there's um, a comment with the HOAs. Did you wanna expand on that? Because I'm not sure. Yes, I do. And um, that's exactly what I want to qualify. I mean, before I get to that, I just do want to um, uh, make clear that again, this is a proposal. Um, so again, things can change before, um, um, once we have the second public hearing, which is next Tuesday, April 11th. But um, it, it's, I would more say they're not really a permit, but more of an application is where I would say is what they're gonna, really going to fill out. But um, keep in mind that the board can always um, reject um, any proposed application extension. And it's not an all or nothing thing. So even if you the board does say, okay, well, um, we'll grant you a partial exemption, a partial exemption, they could just say you'll get an extra year, but that's it. So it's not going to be, like I said, um, uh, all or nothing. There, there can be many, very, several variations um, in between. Of course, the final decision is going to go before uh, for the board to determine again who and how long um, who will be exempted and how long those ex exemptions may last or may not last. Because again, I mean, there the five acres is the minimum to qualify, but again, they um, will can very likely be told no. But now just to get back to Bridget, to your question regarding the HOAs. So one of the things that uh, the board is still hasn't um, give, still hasn't come to a consensus on yet. And we're hoping to do this either um, by next Monday or um, Tuesday, the public hearing itself is to determine for the acreage, is that going to be interpreted as acreage as a whole, meaning that all the acres that make up the HOA or by individual subplot? So my individual subplot meaning is that if it's the acre by property, then it's they're not gonna qualify. But if it's acreage as a whole, because some of the HOAs are 20 plus acres and in its entirety of all the property that um, makes up that particular HOA. And I don't know how um, big each and every one are, um, to be honest, uh, but that's where I, I, I put when I sent that over to you guys, um, possibly um, that they may qualify. And again, so some may not qualify because they may, maybe they, they're not five acres. And I said, I'm pretty sure most of them are, maybe even all of them are, um, but that's what that uh, comment means. Now, most of them, again, as to be expected, is at the, the, the shopping center of Washington Park Plaza, Rye Ridge, um, the Hilton Hotel, the Doral Hourwood property. The, uh, the St. Mary Cemetery is another property that could that would qualify as well as the um, Atria and King Street Rehab are two um, building facilities that are fall within our, under our jurisdiction. And uh, like the Blind Brook, um, Blind Brook Golf Club, that's Bridget and myself uh, and uh, Chris Bradbury, the village administrator, Michael Nowak, superintendent of public works, they visit to get an idea how their operations work um, as well, as well as a couple other ones that um, is uh, cerebral palsy, which is um, the northern part of the village on King Street. They would also potentially um, qualify for it. And I yes, I need to put um, Anthony Bob Balfamonte's landscaping. And for those who don't know where that is, that's on Lincoln Avenue where you have the observatory with the bench right by the airport and where residents can actually get a free compost that they leave outside. So if you need a compost or soil, um, that's a great place for you to get it free of charge. Um, they would also qualify based on the size of their property. Um, now, again, I, as I said, I'm uh, not entirely sure if I'm missing anybody, but those are all the ones that just brainstorming this over with Chris that we were able to come up with. Okay. Um, I guess I'll just start by sharing my own personal thoughts uh, with the HOA, especially. For me, those are 
these HOAs, those homes are owned individually, right? So it's, they're not rented. It's not, so people buy homes individually in these communities, but they choose to be in an HOA where they pay a portion of the landscaping costs. For me, that it's still an individual home though. So I think, you know, it should be counted as the lot, the lot size. I mean, that's just my own thoughts on it. I don't know if anybody else has comments on any of this. I mean, I, I completely agree, particularly because um, the property values of the the HOA homes are higher than in general. Obviously, this is a big blanket statement, but the the prices of, you know, the Talcott homes, the Belfair homes, the Kingfield homes, um, the Enclave they skew higher than the property values of the other homes in Rybrook where they don't have the opportunity to apply for this exemption. And so I just, I feel like it's like a little bit of a social injustice to um, allow homeowners with higher property values to potentially participate in an exemption um, compared to those with lower property values. I agree. That's among other issues, issue. among other issues, like the fact that, you know, if we're, and I mean, really, I just, I, I just always think of what, you know, Mayor um, Feinstein and, and, you know, Mayor Rosenberg with her said that, you know, when you add up all these exemptions, you know, you could, you're potentially cutting out like 25% of the, of Rybrook and um, like, I get that the idea is that they they have more to cover. You know, I, I'm I'm guessing, I mean, I don't know where this is coming from. And that's the question that I have for you, Greg, if you can add color to like how the conversations went, like, I don't know what's a proprietary conversation and what's not about what came to this. Because really, to me, it's 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 not a change from, from the first, um, I mean, the only change from the first draft is that now they have to apply, but it's basically the same bucket of of groups that were in the same, that were in the, you know, that, that were automatically exempted in the first draft that are now exempted based on this five acre thing, except for, you know, except now adding in the HOAs potentially, which makes it worse, which is going to make it more than 25% when, when you add it all up. But um, anyway, like if you, if you, ex so I guess the idea is that, well, there's more that the landscapers have to, um, you know, cover. So, you know, it's it's harder for them to adapt to this new thing. At the same time, if if they had like one big five acre, you know, kind of to Bridget's whole point about their individual properties, if they had one he, he, larger five acre client, or if they had 10 half acre clients, like they still have to adapt to the same amount of property. Um, so it so it doesn't really matter. But anyway, if it's just it just like really cuts out the the whole point and efficacy of of this legislation. If if we're if we're having you know more and more of the the land in Rybrook doesn't doesn't qualify then like it's just, it's just we're negating the whole point of it um, and and I think that I haven't done the due diligence but I think Bridget you've pointed out in the past that um, you know the other municipal legislation that we've that we've looked at they don't have exemptions is that right so. Yeah. So, I so they don't, they definitely don't exempt. I haven't seen a single one that exempts HOAs. I have seen some that exempt golf clubs and churches, things along those lines, but none that exempt other housing types, you know. So Sorry, that, you broke out a bit, so I couldn't hear. Oh, I was, I've never seen any um, of them exempt HOAs. I've never seen okay. that. So do they exempt other things? Uh, churches are pretty common, golf courses and okay. graveyards. That's kind of a typical thing uh, mm -hmm. and retirement homes, I would say. But uh, mm -hmm. that's kind of like the, the ones that I see over and over. But it's usually pretty limited to that. I've actually never seen one that does it by acreage. Um, I also think, like you said, there's an issue with it being like something where it's like people that have the most expensive properties are exempt, but those that are living in, you know, smaller properties are not potentially exempt. So I, I don't know. I don't, I don't like that personally. So. All right. I don't know if I'm the one who is like has a bad connection. No, I feel like. Can, can the rest me? of you hear me? Okay. Yes. 
Oh, okay. I can't, but then I just got a notification that like my connection was unstable. Okay. So I, didn't know. I was having being problematic on top of that. <laughs> um, right. I'll keep my door open. That might help. Yeah. So for me, the, the other places, as far as, I mean, like the shopping center, the hotel, the cemetery, I know that the cemetery already uses electric, I think you said, Greg, so that's not even an issue for them. But, um, you know, the, it's really the HOAs that I take the biggest issue with in this, because I do feel like it is a bit of an injustice to the rest of the community, um, especially since if you consider cost wise, in the HOAs, they're they're splitting costs between what a hundred homes. So let's say that the landscaper does raise their prices. But and I that's I we don't have any information to say that that will happen. And historically, according to other municipalities, that hasn't happened. But let's just say they do. The cost that these that the HOA individual homes are going to incur will be less potentially, much less than an individual homeowner who's hiring a landscaper on their own because they're splitting it and potentially getting a big discount because they're doing a hundred homes at a time versus one homeowner. And so it's also unfair in that way. So I just, I don't know. I don't like that personally. I don't know if we wanna come together as a committee to comment on that in like a letter to the trustees. Um, but that's up to everyone how we want to approach this or if if anybody else takes issue with it as well yeah i, I guess now now that the legislation is it's not going to uh, start until 2024 right so that's already a year where we're like i i can understand if if they say okay starting next month you know we're enacting this law and then people need some time so we're already giving a year. Exactly. Um, and then I, I guess, you know, any exemption that's given, obviously it is given by the board at their discretion. I would want to limit it somehow. So like maybe one more year at, at most, right? Because yeah. yeah. we're already talking a year to implement. Now we're giving them a second year to implement. So two years to, to, to implement this thing. Um, I have the, the the same feeling about the um, the HOAs, but not not that it's um, you know a price point or not. It's just still a you know still an individual's residence. So the 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 fact that they were clustered together versus separate, I I don't think should merit an exemption. But um, more so where there's large entities, five acres that handle their own, um, you know, leaf blowing and, and maintenance. I, I, I could see giving exceptions, exemptions to those folks, but where you're using a landscaper that already has more than one contract across the county, and they're probably already, you know, facing um, ordinances for, for electric blowers already, and they probably have electric blowers, uh, yeah, I don't understand the the need to give those, um, <clears throat> you know, those uh, those folks an exemption. I think okay. that's an important point that you make. That where they are, everyone is getting a year. It doesn't matter who you are, everyone's getting a year. And then I I like the thought of like if they, I would like to see like you said some sort of limitation on this that people can't apply to get a permit and then have it perpetually, you know, forever. And it's just like, oh, you're never going to have to, <laughs> you know, use electric. You can use gas as long as you want. I'd like to see it really limited. Um, I I guess the, the issue is we just don't know. We don't know how they're going to implement this. So we can only speculate. And I think one of the problems as well is that as trustees change, new people come in, some people could potentially want to say, oh, I'll give out a 10 year permit or I'll give out a, you know, whatever. And it, so it could change person to person, their thoughts on this. Um, so that's sort of what I'm thinking right now. I don't know if anybody else wants to comment. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I, I think if the legislation could say, you know, it's limited to a one year exemption, then I, I think that works. But if it's 
exemptions at the discretion of the board, like you said, it, you know, you could say a 20 year, a 10 year, um, and then certain chunks of, of Rybrook wouldn't, um, you know, be covered under the, the legislation. What I would also like to see is that instead of doing this five acre thing, I would like to see a permit being allowed for people who can prove that it would be an undue burden on them. Um, that's what I would like to see because I don't believe it is an undue burden on the HOAs. Um, you know, so I think that there could be places that have a legitimate reason and they can prove that with paperwork or whatever they need to prove it with. But um, I don't feel like a five acre rule should really make that much of a difference, you know? So I think Michael, did you wanna say something? Yeah, no, I mean, just to chime in, I like the one year exemption that Frank said. I, I like your point about the unfairness of the HOA, you know, one type of homeowner versus another, even though they're private homes. I guess what I'm struggling a little bit, bit with HOAs is, I'm assuming I'm correct that it's a combination of private homes and common space. So is it, yeah. I mean, I guess the question then is if you don't exempt, I could see people getting annoyed that on HOAs, they've got to use the electric when you're out in front of someone's house, but then maybe they can switch over to the lead, you know, to the gas when they, you know, go to the village green or whatever they call it. Um, I would rather probably just eliminate the HOA exemption entirely. Yeah, and I'm not sure how much of it is common space. I mean, they probably, I, I've driven through Belfair in particular and the others, and I know that a lot of them have like long drives um, and things like that. Uh, but yeah, that's a that's an interesting thought. Let me just respond just to clarify as much as possible. Um, so the five acre rule, so this was all discussed at the March 14 meeting. This was really, because I know Ashley had, this question really just kind of set to to make it as fair as possible and to settle it in terms of like who should be exempted who should not be so even us at the village we're not exempted I mean, we'll be applying for at least an extension um as i previously said though too that um it's not like an all or nothing in the exemption and, and that's a, a um understandable concern in terms of the, the trustees change maybe like a, a give like a, a 10 year um, but at least for for this board, is just speaking of some of the trustee, the trustees on the current board that we have, is that and it actually does say in the law that it has to show like an undue um, burden. But um, what we're really looking for here, at least what the board's really looking for, is um, particularly like operational concerns, and that's the argument too that the the village has made in terms of. I mean, look, because we are already buying, irrespective of what happens in the law, as I've said it, uh, in previous meetings and forums is that we are buying uh, two electric packs. First time we're gonna be implementing them in operations actually this year. So even before the local law takes effect for everybody else, we're going to be uh, doing that. But we will be applying for at least an extension our ourselves. And so they may decide to give a one year or they may decide to give no. So there's no guarantee anyone and there likely isn't gonna be like a, a um, well, certainly not an exemption for life. Now, in terms of like um, who will be and who shouldn't be, um, now, like some of them, like, for example, the Blindberg Golf Club. Now, again, I can't say what the board or what they're going to do, but they have to their credit. They have um, implemented because uh, we're bridge and I did see a, a lot of electric um, tool, even beyond leaf blowers already. Even young, they started years ago when it was much more challenging. But some, some of the equipment they use, like industrial leaf blower, to my knowledge, there is no electric equivalent. So that's something for an operational concern where the board may consider and say, no, um, in that aspect, you guys will get an exemption. And again, I can't speak on behalf of the board, um, but also speaking to Anthony, like Balfamante's landscape being for him now, this is what he's just telling me, is that um, he uses a, a um, gas leaf blowers to blow up his equipment so that way it doesn't cause a safety hazard. Um, they've had like fires in, um, in the past because he has like dirt and all sorts of compost in the back. So that's another circumstance where the board may say, okay, in that case, because it's a op it's a safety issue, um, then you it will be granted uh, either extension, exemption, um, et cetera. Um, so that's what, what a couple of the trustees are intensely looking at in terms of show us in terms of how it's going to be a safety issue, an operational problem that you can't comply within the, the law after the one year grace period that um, everybody's going to get. 
Now, Bridges, you mentioned that they did say before. Now, St. Mary's does use electric themselves, like when they blow off like a driveway, side, uh, like a walkways. And that is the one thing that is done for everybody because in the law, um, like for blowing it off using like a drive raise or utility um, machines, I'll actually pull it up on myself exactly what it says. So the, the one exemption that everybody does get is that um, operation utility companies or to the use of leaf blowers in connection with driveway, road paving or ceiling. So that, that's something that, again, whether you're the landscape or residence, um, you could use gas still outside um, whenever you, you want. But just going back to St. Mary's, um, is that their landscaper that mows the lawn, they use gas to blow off um, uh, like uh, the, uh, the tombstones as well as the, the, the pieces over there. But they themselves, the staff, use um, electric. I'm just speaking with um, Washington Park Plaza, she said too, she'll speak with her the landscaping staff, um, but she said she doesn't, um, I spoke to her, foresee it being an issue on her end, and neither did the Hilton Hotel. It's just another example when I spoke to them. So, you know, some of the, even the bigger properties, as we said, that they may not even apply for them because they don't think they're going to need one. Um, but, I mean, it was try to be as fair as also to the landscapers themselves who have to make the transition. Um, because even for us, like we're, so we're trying to buy, but it, it is a challenging process. I'm so just to be uh, totally honest. I mean, we are shopping around for trying to get the best brands that we can get out there. And we are um, having them come to the village as well as making trips to when they're doing these, um, dem these I guess you can call them open shows of uh, brand brandishing their new latest electric leaf blowers. But so we will settle on something soon in um, that regard. And the other one that I also forgot to mention earlier, because we thought that we weren't able to do so, but the school districts. So the school districts, um, again, they obviously both Porchester and um, Blindbrook. Well, for Porchester, it's really going to be the middle school because the middle school falls entirely within Rybrook. And then part of the high school does, but I'm not really sure in terms of Porchester High School if there's enough green space where it would be applicable um, to them, at least enough green space that falls under um, our jurisdiction. I'm pretty sure most of it falls under Porchester's jurisdiction. So therefore, um, we that um, we, we can't, uh, the village wouldn't be able to do anything about that, even if it wanted to, um, in terms of regulating uh, their gas use. But I did speak to schools on themselves to, uh, to let them know that, uh, yes, um, this law will be applying to you guys as well. So I, I don't know this, if the school districts are going to apply for an exemption slash extension. And again, the reason why I keep saying exemption slash exemption is because uh, um, there isn't, uh, there like the push, even from the board currently to say, okay, an, an exemption is going to be given. Um, uh, they're, they're more looking at, or really just the, well, if they have to, just to give like another extra year or two currently. Um, again, that's just what they, in our discussions with them, but of course, um, they'll, everything really honestly, like, like the old saying, the devil's in the details. So, but anyone who does apply for one, they are going to have to show, not just from the argument of, of saying, oh, it's too expensive. I mean, all, I, I, every, reason why it's going to have to be backed up with documentation and to go before them and show them look why we, we should get one. So I do want to at least assure everybody here, um, both you guys on this and um, anyone else who has a concern about it, which is a totally fair concern, that um, it is going to be a very carefully vetted process, not one where anyone can just go up there and say, I want one, and then you're, you're going to get it just because you asked for it. I mean, I think I'm this can't be in the legislation. This is really just my personal thing is that it's just, you know, now that the lands, you know, it's April. So the landscapers are back out there and, you know, you see them just blowing parts of people's like yards or woodsy areas that just like don't need to be blown there. And I'm not talking about like, you know, you could, you can, you can the people can still have these like perfect green lawns and there's you know just like shrubbery on the periphery or like back where there's you know that there's woods behind them and you just see these guys and they're blowing the leaves that are in the woods which it's just it just doesn't need to be done and so when they say it takes more time the power isn't there it's because they're trying to do things that just don't need to be done and I know we've talked about education I'm not really going anywhere with this comment except that it's just like my like just my pet peeve that that like all these reasons why they say they can't do it with electric is because of um sorry for sounding sanctimonious but like because of just unhealthy and unnecessary like landscaping habits that I mean I I sent the email to all of you guys about how 
I was informed by a Talcott resident about how, you know, they have this erosion problem. And of course, all the runoff from Talcott goes straight into the, the, um, the Blind Brook. And we have flooding issues, as we know, all over the village. And a lot of it is because we don't have any topsoil. We don't have any organic matter that can retain the water when we have these heavier waterfalls. And then, um, so it's just like these practices and, you know, another reason, like I said, I'm against an exemption just in, in a high, um, you know, a high acreage place because that's just like more runoff. It's caught, it's, it's exacerbating the, the flooding problem. And it's just these like landscaping habits that have just developed over, over years that are just so like counterproductive and unnecessary and create more work and, and, and take more time. But what I can't Thanks say for listening. I, well, I did tell the Landscaper Association too, because I've been in regular contact with them. Mm -hmm. I did tell them, look, irrespective of what comes out with this law, um, whether it be this version or something else, the board's made it very clear um, what their prerogative is in, in terms of they want to see something done. So I said, look, it's incumbent upon you guys, particularly, and my, my mean you guys in terms of landscapers, particularly those that service the, Rye, uh, the village of Rybrook, that um, you guys need to start investing in the infrastructure, like now. I mean, we've actually invited them and, uh, and we are going to con continue to do so um, during our, pro our journey, I would say, in terms of buying um, electric packs, we're inviting them, including them to see like uh, the demos. Mm -hmm. So that way, again, that we're making this easier for them as well to make the transition. But um, I have told them that just as much is that, look, you guys got to start investing on your end because look, it's going to happen. And so just, cha just change what they're doing. You don't have to blow yeah. as much. It's not going to take you any more time if you're not like literally blowing the woods. <laughs> There's yeah. just like trees. I'm not going to die. So I'm not going to comment uh, on that. Um, but I, I did tell them, look, from, from the... the from the perspective of the village, yeah, no, um, you, you, totally guys have you. To take, you guys have to take mm -hmm. some initiative now. The ball, but I mean, like the balls mm -hmm. in our court from the village in terms of getting this done. But so now the the ball is also in your court in terms of making sure that you guys stay ahead of the game. Because and look, I, I understand too. Is it easier, at least um, cost wise, from a village's perspective? Um, yes, which I understand that, um, but. I even said that too, from an operational perspective, it's just as challenging, if not in some ways even harder, because as, as I told the landscapers several times, and I'll say it again, is that not to say landscapers don't have a difficult job, because they do, but as and I've said this several times before, is that from the village, again, we have to maintain the parks, maintain the roads, maintain the sewers. And that's what the argument that we've made before, why again, were we were applying for an extension, because then we don't need a lifetime exemption, nor, nor do we mm -hmm. want, or even one percent that extends several years, because... And we've told our own crew that too. I mean, we, we our superintendent of public works, Michael Nowak, has told them. I, we, I've told them. The village administrators told them. Is that look? Yet yeah, we're all. This is something that we're going to also have to adapt to, as well. I'm mean, operating electric and also finding ways to reduce our gas consumption because we have to, as um, the village, we have to set um, the, the example. Um, but I also. Um, from our DPW's crew's perspective, because again, I've been listening to all the different sides of our crew, our police departments, how they feel like our police department, the ones who have to enforce it, the landscapers, um, as well as um, all the, uh, the residents within Rybrook, because look, some residents also don't use landscapes, some residents do it themselves. And I also understand that putting landscapers aside for a moment, that we also wanted to make sure that we're giving residents who don't have landscape to themselves the opportunity to have time and to, to because look, it is an expense. I mean, there's no way of getting around it. I mean, the reality is, is that um, electric from an operational standpoint, um, and it, at least from an environmental, environmental standpoint, it's, there's no question that it's better than gas. And anybody who tells me otherwise um, is kidding themselves. Um, but it, it, there is a no, in, no disputing that it is an expense that has to be incurred, at least upfront. It's an upfront expense that it, it, it's, and it's a hefty one, um, and and that is. Uh, I don't. It's I mean, we could, that, we don't have to go into that because I I would debate that that like every every industry evolves. Every industry has you know like you know new technology, new requirements, new legislation. It's just like how the world works, and so this you know, is something that the landscapers have to deal with. And I actually think yeah. it's a relatively low cost. And if they change their practices, they wouldn't have to spend as much time on each um, thing. And time is money, and then they could go have more clients and be making more money. So. Like, so it's all, it's all, that's all debatable, but anyway. Well, I think in the long term it's going to pay out. And this is my personal view 
and mm-hmm. and look and, and industry we i i mean i'm not an expert in this field um but like anything else i mean i do think that at least hopefully that it'll get cheaper as, as more of this um comes out it's just that it's just a new uh relatively new um product model and, and not just electric leap blowers well also you can look at it with electric um, cars as well i mean that's mm-hmm. a whole example which we're not going to get into but um, as it currently is right now, it is um, an expensive upfront expense. But in the long term, I do think that it'll save us um, from, from the village's perspective as well. It'll, it'll save us in the long term because then we won't have to be buying uh, so much um, gas to operate the leaf blowers is will be one of the good, good things about it. I mean, obviously, there's more to it than that. And but also it's going to be a lot safer for the environment. And also, I feel safer for on the landscapers as well as for our crew members and residents who operate it because um, the, the ones who are most at risk from the emissions, which is the one main carbons, are the, the, uh, the landscapers of the operators and themselves. And the ones who are most at risk of the noise are not the residents maybe who are working from home, but the most ones at risk are the ones operating it, which often happens to be the landscapers because, oh. or our own staff because they're the ones that, again, where it's going off right in their ears. Now, granted, you should be wearing ear protection when you do it. And I'll, like my like uh, mine at home that I use, I always make sure I use um, ear protection. Um, but again, they're the ones most at risk are the ones again who are operating it. So it's in coming just also for their safety in, in terms of landscapers that they also make the transition, not just from a business model, but I said, but also from the health and stand, safety stand for for themselves and their employees that, that will be operating it for, for them. What is the process for the, I, I probably was in there and I missed it, for the exemption? How does one get, who makes the decision as to whether you get the exemption or not? Sure. So we will fill out an application and how that's going to work. I'm Chris and I still have to figure that out. Um, but it's, you, it'll, the application will go to the board and then the board um, will, will make the decision in terms of whether they get an extension or a partial exemption. And, and, and that's the reason why we kept it open and said that we didn't limit it. Is so that way, again, that you have options. So that way, again, that, that you don't just say exemption because, again, we don't, that way, right. nobody gets like a permanent, like lifelong exemption. So there, there's, there's, there's wiggle room there in terms but of. But if so 20, I'm sorry, so if 20 entities want something, there would be 20 agenda items at a monthly board meeting. Uh, you, of, you could space them out. You don't have to do it at every no. single um, okay. board meeting. So again, and we're not going to put like 20 at a time. And that's why we, again, so like the ones that I listed, I mean, these are the ones that could pretty much um, are the only ones that would qualify. But again, it's up to the board how much, how much honestly they want to, um, how many they would want to hear on any given meeting, but they can choose to do one, two, or they can even do 10 if they want it all at once and, and get it all done um, when they tell people either um, yes um, or no. And again, I said some of the, as I said earlier, some of the um, the properties that qualify, some of them even said that they may not even, again, they can always change their mind. I said some of them may not even apply to begin with because they said it won't be necessary because they can make the transition. I mean, I can't speak for all of them what they're going to do in the long term, but that's just what a couple of them told me. Because I called all the ones there. Now, I didn't call all the HOAs because I don't have a phone number all the presidents, but all the commercial properties, the seniors, lives in the school districts, I called every single one of them. Now, some of the more common exemptions came up before, um, like we said before, like um, schools tend to be one um, in cemeteries, uh, nursing homes, and even actually the municipality itself. I did call a lot of um, like my counterparts in different municipalities. Um, the municipality operations tend to be exempted um, in most cases. Now, as I did say, we will be applying for an extension, but we are also going to be taking a lead going forward and implementing the electric into our operation starting uh, this summer. So I guess my question is, as a committee, do we want to write a letter to state our position on this? If we have a position, um, do we want to respond to this somehow or do we just want to stick with what's already out there and let it go whatever happens on the 11th i mean at this point we can only comment on it you know do a letter from the committee if we if we wanted to um we could even write letters individually of course you know but as a committee if we wanted to vote on you know giving a statement about our position on this we could do that as well i would i would um 
I would be happy to write something specifically about the HOAs. I mean, I would start off, if I was going to draft something, I would say that, um, you know, that I'd want to make a comment in general about the exemptions, because from the first to the second draft, the change really is just that the same groups that were automatically granted exemptions now have to apply and that there are a lot of, you know, there's a lot that's kind of left up to trust in, ter in terms of like, what's the application process and and what are the criteria for granting the exemptions and what are the length of the exemptions, all the things that Greg said, but the fact that like, it doesn't say in the legislation what they are and and you want legislation to be as precise and actionable as possible and that's not very precise. <laughs> so I, also, so yeah. I would start off with that in a letter and then I would go into specifically with the HOAs and like make the points that we've made on this call. Yeah, I think what you said about also the erosion, all of that is like is really important because I don't think it's brought up enough. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if people realize that. So I think I'm it's sure also, they don't. I think it's also important that we point that out because that is an issue that, like you said, really affects the community and it affects people that are down, you know, from them that don't live in the HOAs, you know. Um, so what they do is affecting other people. Um, detrimentally, you know, obviously saw people lose, you know, everything during the floods last time. So um, it's a big issue. Um, so I do think we should comment on that in some sort of way if we can. I mean, we could, that's why I had also hoped that more people could be on this call, but like we could draft something and I don't know, Bridget, if you're planning on going on Tuesday, but I could probably go and read it. You're not going. I don't think so. Let me check my calendar. I mean, I would I would go for the purpose of reading the letter. Okay. If uh, uh, let me get back to you on that and see what I can do. Um, but I yeah, maybe what we can do, like you said, is draft the letter and then have everyone have email it out to everyone and then see get a vote on like does everybody approve this, you know, or do we want to just do give them a certain amount of time, like 40 exactly. hours to respond. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. To vote on this. And so but, it, I, but I would that, say actually 48 hours to respond, not necessarily vote because I don't know oh, if, if there's any objections to the. Yeah. Uh, Cause like, I don't know if, I mean, I guess we have in the past, like from what you did before from other meetings, we can vote over email, but I just think that's, I think, no, it may, can we vote? I don't know. I guess. There's anything. Can you please comment within 48 hours so that we can think about amending or discuss, you know, amending parts of it if we need to. I think that's fine, at least for me. Um, I don't know if anybody else has any thoughts on that, but um, that gives us a little bit of time to put something together. Well, not that much time though. <laughs> yeah. I'm out all day tomorrow also. Yeah, I have uh, most I have most of the morning and, I, and so around <laughs> the evenings that I'm busier. Um, okay. So I think that might be a good idea. And um, then, like you said, we can just say, give people a certain amount of time to comment if they need to. Mm -hmm. Does anybody else have any ideas or thoughts on how to approach this? Okay. If there's nothing else to say about it, I'll move on to the next agenda item, if that's okay. Okay, so the next agenda item we have is, um, what do we want to do? You know, what, I'll, I'm going to move this one to the, I'm going to move the seed exchange to the end because that's like an event thing. So I'm just going to go to the, um, to the senior center planting, um, which is, I guess it's on the same day as the seed exchange, um, which everybody already knows about uh, that that's going on at the library. Um, but they're on, on the same day, they're going to have um, a cleanup, like they're going to weed uh, some of the beds at the senior center and potentially install some more native plants um, and like touch up things. I don't know. One of the issues is that there's not much of a budget for it. So potentially we could contribute some if we wanted to, to buy some native plants for like the pots there because they have like I think five or so pots out front that are empty currently they also have like a little area back where they wanted to do um some sort of garden as well 
And so if we want to contribute some plants to that, we can. I won't be able to be there because I'll be at the seed event. But if anybody wants to attend uh, the planting, they can attend the planting. I think what time does that go, Hill? It's from like 9 a.m. to? 11. Till 11, okay. Yes, that, that one is just a couple hours um, in the morning. And I'll be there, so I'll be doing both events. I'll be at the AJB first, and I'll be heading over to the library to join Bridget. Um, but yeah, if anyone's interested, Solana, again, if you and the Roots and Truth Club are interested in um, putting some plants in, um, definitely you could speak to me or um, email me or whatever, then we'll uh, get you on. There is a sign-up sheet um, circulating. I was just very busy um, this week, but um, next week I am going to like promote it on our social media pages and send it out probably through a newsletter blast with uh, Chris uh, with a flyer and everything for both of the seed exchange as well as um, the uh, uh, planting at AJP. And it's, it's the town sponsored events. I know Port Chester always participates and the city of Rye does and the village of Mamaroneck and the, the town itself, all five of us participate and pick a site. So this is our spring one, the fall one, typically when we do the cleanup at on Bowman, but this year, I mean, last year too, we did a um, planting at AJP uh, and we're going to be doing this again also at the request of Liz Rothfeld, who's the senior center coordinator. And that kind of brings us to, we have this circle at Village Hall. I mean, it needs to be touched. The problem was last year when we planted it, it was just like a horrible spring. Like it was incredibly hot. There was no rain for like an entire month after we planted those plants. So I think like 75% of them just died, you know, because they were like baking yeah. out there with no water. Um, I mean, so I like tried. A good chance. I tried with the hose, but again, it was a, yeah. it was a long time. And so it, it inevitably needs to be touched up. Like we probably need to buy it. So that also brings us to our budget of like, how much money do we have to buy these things? Um, to touch up the butterfly garden and potentially contribute some plants to the senior center. Um, cause we definitely need to do that at some point. Uh, of course the village hall butterfly garden, we don't have a date for doing that. Um, but we can, I, I was thinking we might want to plant some actually in the fall. Uh, you can, you can plant plants during the fall. You're not going to get the pretty show of flowers and all those things because they're going to go dormant, but we have less of a chance of them baking out in the sun, you know? So it tends to be a good time to plant. Um, and so I was thinking we might want to switch it to then. Um, I feel like that is, uh, then we're kind of leaving things unfinished there for like a lot of time. Um, so it's not going to look great um, versus if we scheduled something earlier, we could kind of spruce it up and make it look nice through the spring, summer and like early fall. Uh, since it is an example to the community of what a nice butterfly garden can look like, you know, native plants and things. So, also, we can also maybe do like late August as was well fair because then August late day time is not a lot of village events going on. So, it may be a good time to do that. How much do you know how much we have in our budget in the sustainability budget? I haven't had a chance to be honest to speak to our treasurer yet, but it's in the high hundreds of dollars because we did have to spend uh, some money on the gloves and the supplies for uh, the uh, the Bowman cl uh, cleanup, but most of the money is in there. And I, I particularly haven't been spending it so that way we can spend it on plants for um, both the AGP as well as um, the butterfly garden out in front. Okay. And just so we have a thousand dollar budgets um, every year. Okay. Um, so other than that, we have the community tag sale uh event which unfortunately we really haven't started out for time i mean i've been so busy and we've been doing all this leaf blower stuff it's kind of like pushed everything else to the side i feel like um so we had talked about uh doing that potentially why is it every time i look on my calendar then it just 20th. it was may in may right may 20th may 20th and with the rain date of the may 21st um so that's not that far from now. <laughs> um, I guess my you, only thought about did anybody that. Respond? I'm sorry. Did anybody respond to the survey you put out? No, but people liked it, but they didn't actually say anything. So um, I guess my only concern is, and I'm going to talk to 
my, Michael with uh, Foster Teen Employment Network, he's been, he was sick. So I had planned on speaking to him about this um, to see if they would be able to get everything together. Last year, you know, they rented out spaces. That's how they did it. They didn't gather everything. But um, I know they do like to gather items to sell. And that's my only thing is like the whole point of the tag sale is for people to kind of do their spring cleaning, but like hold on to things and not throw them in the trash and in preparation of this tag sale. So to gather items. And I'm just wondering, like, will people actually have items that they want to sell because it's such short notice that they might not people always have, have things? Stuff. I don't know. People always have stuff. Okay, so um, <laughs> so if we want to move forward with it, I mean, let's see how many weeks that. So we have one, two, three, four. Like six weeks. That's six, good. Yeah, that's yeah, six weeks. Um, we put out the big banner at the um, at the shopping center, um, and because you already built the web page and the list last time, I'm assuming it would be easy to just reactivate it. Like it's not going to take as yeah. long as it did. Okay. Because yes. um, hopefully we'd be able to get people signing up earlier. Um, that way we can do it. But I'm not a, you know, so do we want to, we still want to move forward with the 20th then. Yeah, I mean, that, that was a request from our, um, so just so you guys know, I'm on the community events committee um, for the village where it's, it's all of us for employees that are on it. Um, and then we discuss like dates and ideas for different events, um, like sponsored by the village. And again, one of the main, um, I guess, concerns we had, I mean, complaints to residents who backed out or are uh, about the like, hot weather, even though again, we can't do anything about that. But so the idea was that we may <laughs> won't be as um, oppressive. But, but look, with the hot weather otherwise, I mean, from what I heard from, I, mean, I didn't go last year because I had another commitment, um, but, from I was told, most of the pro the properties that did participate, including F10, did very well. And I also want to just put um, make this point too about F10. Um, I, I Bridget, I know you know this because I told you, but I want to tell the rest of the committee this, and whoever may be watching this later, is that um, I don't know if how familiar you guys are with the Ryber Focus Program. I know Bridget was actually one of the interviewees with when Alex um, was here, but um, I did John Mungo, who's the host of it. Um, myself, he did one with, um, I, I supply the Zoom link is how that works, but um, he did one with um, Michael Goldstein and it was very informative uh, conversation, basically talked about his um, impetus for founding it and the work that he does. So um, I did post it on our Facebook and Twitter and I'm hoping to do a newsletter blast um, on it, so, but it is available, like I said, on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter currently. And I do suggest that everyone go um, and check it out. Great. Okay, so I will, uh, I already have the posters made from last time, so I'm just going to update that, send it to you, Greg, and then hopefully we can get everything out maybe in the next week or so and start putting up signs and posters and things. And I'll put it on social media, of course, along with the um, seed exchange. And I will ask like, are some of the trustees to put it like, in the Rybrook Residence Facebook page. Oh yeah, can we have it in the email? Because I know one time it wasn't in the email. <laughs> we are like, oh, yeah, we, are. Have, and, we we'll, can we'll have do... like an email for it to send out to everybody with the link to sign up. So that'd be really good. Well, yeah. At least I'll start with you guys here. I only half is here, but are, are you guys all like um, registered with our newsletter? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you guys all get that. Okay, good. Perfect. Um, and if you guys know anybody who isn't, I mean, please tell them to do so. I mean, at events, I know like um, Trustee Epstein, you know, sometimes I'm walking around, ask people, you know, please sign up for our newsletter. Um, but yes, yeah, so we will, I will work with Chris I and mean, we'll get in on there because we want to give as much pressure as possible. And I'll work with one of the trustees um, so that way they can put it in the Ryberg residence page coming from them promoting it as well. Now, I will be honest, I did request access, but um, as of, this was a few weeks ago, I have heard nothing back. So I'm assuming that they're not letting me in. But it is what it is. Okay. And I specifically put out, I'm an employee of the village. Um, <laughs> they're like, no. Nope. I, I guess I should have been more specific that I'm actually the assistant to the administrator. Maybe that would have helped my, my case. But uh, She's really strict about residence. But the thing is that it is like um, Anna Leader, who's the administrator of the page sheet, always, or at least almost always, will like copy and paste the emails that come out from the village onto the page. And Susan often posts the stuff. So that's, that's the stuff does point. get there. It would be nice, you know, to come from you, but it does, it does make it on the page. So that's good. <laughs> yeah. 
but as of now, like I said, it, it's a no-go for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can. It's an exclusive club. You're going to have to move to Red Network to get on that Facebook page. <laughs> Okay. I mean, you pretty much do live in Arawak. I was actually going to notice maybe it's we're still in the recorded meeting, but you have a different like background than usual. So I thought maybe you weren't like stuck in your office. In I'm not. Yeah, I'm actually. That's fine. I'm, I'm actually I'm at home. Um, oh, today, good. So I'm, I'm glad that you sorted that out. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I'll be doing it from home. Sometimes I'll be doing it at the office, depending on what I have uh, going on. But yes, today me, I had no choice. I had something else I had to take care of. Um, uh, for full disclosure, I do volunteer in a fire department. So, I, mean, I know some of you uh, may know that, but um, I do decided to hear something there and then okay. came straight home to do this with you guys. That's awesome. Uh, maybe, maybe, so again, so whoever is the administrator, um, can I please get in? Is that um, if there's, there's any, if there's nothing that anyone wants to add, that was the end of the agenda, at least. Um, yeah, I just, I realized I do the list of the exemptions, the Anthony mm -hmm. Buffamonte Lincoln Avenue. What, what is that? So he's a, a, a landscaper, but, um, he's actually the one that provides a, but he allows it for free based on, so residents can also drop off leaves there as well as, um, pick up compost like soil. Oh, you're, oh, you're talking about at the airport. Yes. Okay, right. So you talk. I didn't realize that that, that was what the airport thing was called, and I'll, I'm, I realize I'm probably going to forget. Well, that's, 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 the of, that's the name of his business. So that's one of his. No, I totally get that. Well, that's why it just it sounds weird in the list because it sounds in the list like it's a landscaper who's asking for an exemption, not like a location. I don't know. Maybe it should be renamed in the list in case. I mean, he is a landscape. He is a landscaper, but no, I uh, totally get yeah. that. But you see what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, it's, yeah. Mis it's like it sort of misrepresents because it looks like it's a landscaper, whereas you know, landscaper doesn't get an exemption uh, and like a property does. So Correct. yes, it's, it's, it's the property itself. Um, and I'm going to read that again tomorrow. And I'm going to be like, what did Greg say? I'm like, <laughs> it's going to take a few times to sink in anyway. Yeah, it, it, I, I've driven past there. It's a facility where he keeps a lot of mulch. And yes. Oh, I mean, I, I walk by it. I'll, I mean, I take walks there. Like I walk by it oh. all the time. I've been there and picked stuff up. I just, I just don't, I think of it as just, you know, the airport where the compost is <laughs> to, you know that all yeah i wanted to add something about the seed sure. swap so um i will like definitely encourage the roots and shoots club to come um and like volunteer and bring seeds but it is also the weekend before like ap exam week so i'm not sure how many people would be available to come no, and I think that's one event, um, as far as I would almost, well, it depends, I guess, for Greg, how many people we have signed up for the senior center planting. It might almost be more beneficial for volunteers to go there because yeah. with the seed swap, at least in the past, it kind of, usually I'm there and Kiki from Portchester Sustainability is there and we can get by with the two of us if we need to. Um, even if there are a lot of people, it's still okay. But I know with at least the planting, it, it'll be a lot of work if like only one person shows up to plant, like, you know, everything. Um, so that might be better served over there. When would the planting be? It's so going to be the same day as the seed swap from 9 to 11, right? Yes, yeah, so if, if I remember from last year, I'll look at the flyer, but it's typically um, somewhere in that time frame. But it's, it'll be over by 11, like the latest. Okay. And it's at the senior center. Well, the, the latest that it'll go to is 12 noon. But again, last year we finished with an hour and a half, but we had a good number of volunteers because one of the sites got canceled. So it won't, I could say for sure, it won't go past noon. Okay. Okay, great. Um, yeah, and, and the more volunteers we have, again, at the seat, at the planting, um, you know, the, the faster it goes, like always. So as I said, I mean, that's when it's scheduled for, but it's last year we did get done an hour and a half. And then you know, everyone else can enjoy the rest of, of their day. And again, I also, uh, too, for anybody who needs service hours as well, because I, I, I've also have, have, um, approved them in the past, and I'm happy to do so again for any of the students who need service hours. Perfect. Yeah, and we'll definitely maybe we can get both of those out in uh, one of the emails as well, do some more advertising for this. Um, if there's no other additions, we can adjourn the meeting. I do want to uh, mention um, one other thing. So... It does actually say this in the law um, that 
the, this year, even though again, everyone gets a year, the, the board does want to see some uh, like public education, but um, they're act a lot of it, just to be honest, they're going to defer that to you guys, the Sustainability Committee. Um, so it's just something for us to uh, just start thinking about. I'm going to have to stay on until like 10 o'clock tonight, um, think how we're going to do that. But it's definitely something for all of us to start thinking about in terms of how we want to go about that. Now, one of the things that I have said in the past is I like got at the birthday, and I, I, if we have a presence there, and the last year we didn't. So I definitely want us to have a presence there because it's like, events like that, like those are golden opportunities. And again, that we there is space to always allocate it for us. I mean, last year we just had to give it up because um, we just didn't have enough participation on our end. And I said, I will be there um, anyway myself. Um, but other like, ideas that we want to throw out there, including sending on newsletter blast or um, hosting like Zoom webinars, if anyone wants to, uh, to volunteer to, and I'll be, of course, be um, supplying the Zoom link. Uh, the, these ideas that we can uh, start thinking about, but definitely at like, the birthday, that should be a, a given. Um, Ashley, do you want to say something? Yeah, I mean, for years we've asked for like our own email. Um, you know, handle or address or whatever, and to send out emails. So we've been, we've been asking to do this. I mean, I don't, I'm not, I'm on like Rye Sustainability has always had their own address. I think that, um, so we can definitely do newsletters to be sent out, but I think that they're more impactful and, and we can even like draft them and you can review them and Chris can review them and anybody can review them and approve them at the village. It's not because we want to go like haywire crazy, send something out every week or whatever. But I think seeing seeing something from the committee that says from the Rybrook Sustainability Committee, not like Rybrook News or whatever, and having, you know, whatever the subject line is, whatever the topic that we're covering and let it be just about that is going to be helpful education as opposed to, you know, having it be part of Rybrook News from the village of Rybrook as, or like one paragraph within the thing. Like, I just think for, if I love the fact that that's a goal and I'm glad that that's being asked, but I think that those um, doing the, the email, the email slash newsletter communication with the criteria that I just listed is what's going to have some impact. No, like I'll speak to IT person, I'll be honest, I don't know how feasible that is, but it's definitely something I'll bring up with him to see if that's something that um, can be established. I mean, I do like the idea personally, but again, I just don't want to say that it's possible. Oh, yeah, and like I, I said, it's, it's not that we would own it in the sense that we... Yeah. No, that we send out like crazy but just if you have to like I mean my background's marketing like you have to brand things right you have to um have the right subject lines you have to have it from the right person like those things all matter um so so if the village wants it to work then they should follow the best practice no yeah that's stuff that and these all things that we said that we'll take into consideration but I do want to ask just going back to the birthday real quick is there anybody who thinks that they can be there? And I believe it's always the same. I've, I've only been here uh, my second year here. It's typically from Rukkakli the third Saturday in June. I mean, because mm -hmm. that's going to be the big one in terms of that. Because again, we can, and now that we, especially again, that we passed this law, that's a good opportunity to explain to, to our um, residents. Because again, everything is public, but um, there's a, just to be honest with you guys, there's a lot of people who are not going to come to the meetings, who are not going to, um, watch the recordings. So when you have um, literally hundreds and like more than 1,000 people there, I mean, not everyone there, of course, is going to live in Rybrook, but most of the people who do come are Rybrook residents. So I just want to ask, um, just starting here, do you guys, anyone that would want to do that? I, could, I can be there. Mm -hmm. I just, I think also that like we, we've had tables a lot of times. And like I said, we've tried to, if we, if we care about compost, I think that we should be doing the compost there and you know the people in the committee need to help out but then also like the the um the you know the dpw guys who are can have to help like get the stuff back to the bins at village hall and um you know the wh whoever is doing the I, I mean i always have this challenge that like when i show up and i'm trying to set up the compost like the guys who are there i don't know if it's the Rye Town people who are hired to to deal with the refuse from the establishment, but I'm trying to you know set it up um, so that people can compost this and that. So my point is that like I think the committee can have um, an impact, but it's it it has to 
it can't just even be like the table and that we're handing out flyers. I mean, cause I've, you know, again, I've done these, these things for many years at the birthday party, we have tried to do a lot of different things, but I think that sometimes it's like, I feel like it's going to sound more dramatic than I mean it to be, but it's, it's like there are people like sort of like working against the fact that we're trying to push composting and composters, but then it was like really hard to get everybody on board with like, well, then we should do composting at the event. Um, so I just think it has to, it has to be like just the idea if we were going to have electric leaf blowers and we wanted to showcase them you wouldn't want people like in the background using gas blowers like that just as like another example I, I just think it it should be you you Chris have talked about those like countertop composting bins like you and Chris had talked about I don't know if we're doing that program if that's something so, that we would do but like it should just my point is it shouldn't be a one-off it should be somehow connected with we're composting at the village or we're doing something with like the the leaf blowers, it should somehow be holistic. Just to answer that, and so we are putting in a grant for them. So again, doesn't mean we're going to win any of them. Mm -hmm. But if we do, um, we're trying to go for a hundred, a fifty of each unit type. Wow. The FC um, thirty and the, the maestro. Um, even if we don't get a hundred, if we do again, then it'll be on a first come first serve basis. Should we win? So that means any of you guys can also um, apply. So again, it'll, it'll be a half the cost because again, the village and the grant is covering half the cost and the other half will be covered by the resident um, of Rybrook. So again, it'll be a pretty good deal. And um, again, it, it'll, it's, a, it's a pilot program, but then after that, you know, if, if other residents want them again, they're now that they're at least have that promotion within the village, but should we get, should we win? And let's say if one of you guys win one of them, then if you want to bring it to, I mean, I have no problem with that bringing it to the, to, uh, the birthday and to you show how this works and you know, you're, you're, promote, you're promoting food composting that way. It's just a thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's good. I mean, I hope we win um, something, uh, at least a few of them, but again, that's not, um, we shall see. I mean, unfortunately, I can't make any promises there. It's all on the, the DEC, the state, um, when they look at the application. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I can volunteer for the birthday party. It, the reason why I'm always gone is because it's on my anniversary. So I always end up taking a vacation like that time or doing something, you know, and it just lands on like the worst day for me, um, to be, you know, going to the birthday party. Um, so I'll see, I don't know what we're doing yet, but I'll see if I can, cause you said it's that Saturday, the 17th, usually. It's, it's, it's always the same weekend every single year. The third um, it is the it is the seventeenth. Okay. Yeah, yeah it, it, that one, and then like the one, the other one, the other two that's constant, like in the Winterfest event, that's always the first Friday in December. Mm -hmm. So it's always it's always constant. At those two events. And I agree with Ashley that you know the village should be setting the example, not just us as a committee, but the village, you know administration and with these events that the village puts on, you know, maybe that's something we could think about talking about more in the future. I would like to see them be green as like a default, you know, that automatically there's composting, automatically we're not allowing plastic straws, automatically we're not, you know, we're trying to make it a an eco-friendly event. Um, because obviously like having, you know, these events, it can generate a lot of waste, a lot of trash, you know, so it'd be nice to show people in the village how to do these things if they aren't already aware, um, and also to showcase the programs we have. If there's nothing else, we can adjourn the meeting now. Anything else? Okay, perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Have, a good have a good night. night. Bye. -bye. Bye.